Morning year three and year four. Hope you've enjoyed the nice long weekend. So this week for your writing task, we're going to be looking at some non-fiction writing. So I have made a links board, so we'll have a look at that now. So this week, we're going to create an information leaflet all about ancient Rome. So we're gonna have some nice colorful fronts and lots of information on the inside. So we're going to need to persuade people to visit the bustling city of ancient Rome. And throughout the week, we're going to make sure that we're using some great adjectives, some really powerful verbs. We're gonna use some key vocabulary about things that you can see and do in ancient Rome. We might start with some rhetorical questions. We're gonna need a heading at the beginning of our leaflet. We'll use some subheadings for each section and some nice bright colorful pictures and captions. So if we were going to look at a leaflet um, all about Poole or Bournemouth, we know that it would tell us, oh, we've got fantastic, wonderful beaches. You can visit the aquarium. You can walk through the gardens. So those types of things. We need to think about what would people go and do in ancient Rome. So we're going to split our leaflet into three sections. We're going to think about the things that you can do to keep you entertained in ancient Rome. Um, you can visit a Roman bath and if you were going to go to the market or some shopping. So those are going to be the ways we're going to persuade people to go to Rome. So today, we're gonna to have a little look at those three headings and I'm going to ask you to make some notes all about ancient Rome. So you'll need to do your Daytonello and then you're gonna have three separate subheadings, entertainment, baths and markets or shops and a few bullet points underneath. I think I've got six, five and six. So we don't need too many. And remember when we're doing our notes, we don't need to write in full sentences. We don't need to write all the information. It's just some key points to remind us what we found out. So the bit we're going to start off with now is we're going to look at entertainment. So if you need to pause this to get this page ready, do that and then you can continue with the video. So, some Roman facts. I couldn't find a video that helped us, so I'm afraid you've got to listen to me talking. But Rome was found in 753 BC and it became a really rich and powerful city. So lots of people would want to visit. And the Romans were amazing architects and engineers. They built roads, and walls, and aqueducts. Lots of fantastic things came from Rome. So, entertainment. One of the places we're going to suggest people can go to visit in Rome is this place here. It's called the Colosseum. Now, in Roman time, it would have been complete, but this is what you can actually see when you go to Rome now. But the Colosseum is a giant stone amphitheater in the center of Rome. The Roman arena was a place of entertainment for the Romans. The main attraction were the gladiators. Gladiators were men um, who were trained to fight and they would fight each other inside the Colosseum arena. The games were often brutal and gory, and usually the gladiators were slaves or prisoners. If they became very good at being a glad gladiator and they survived, then they often became rich and famous. Now, sometimes these battles and these games would last all day. The gladiators would do battle with each other and sometimes with wild animals such as lions, bears, rhinos and elephants. Now another favourite pastime of the ancient Romans was having chariot races and this is perhaps the oldest of the Roman pastimes. There were teams that raced, the red team, green team, blue team and white team and they would People would follow and cheer them, just like you would with a football team or a rugby team. And so the top chariot racers were like heroes. They were just the top athletes of that time. And the races were always held in an area called a circus. And the oldest and largest circus in Rome was called the Circus Maximus. And you could see it's around 150,000 people there. So this is a model of what Rome would have looked like. And here's the Colosseum in the middle, fully complete. And here's a picture of 
the chariot circus race track. So Circus Maximus. So your job now is you can pause the video and go back and see if you can make some notes about ancient Rome's entertainment. So you can see mine there, but if you've got some of your own and then you want to have a look at mine after, then that would work really well. So the next bit we're going to look at is baths. So every town had its own bath complex, a bit like a big swimming pool. And at one point in Rome, there were 170 of these bath complexes, but that number then did increase to 900. So the Romans loved washing and bathing, and rather than it done in private in people's homes, the Romans built magnificent public bathhouses in towns across their empire. And only the rich had baths in their own homes, so everybody else had to go to the public bath to use it. And the main purpose was obviously to get clean, but most Romans living in the city um, liked to get clean every day, so they would visit every day. And they also like to use a special metal scraper called a strigil. And they would put oil on their skin and then scrape it off with this metal scraper. But it wasn't just for baths. People would also go there for a massage. And it was a place for socialising. So friends would meet up at the baths and talk and have meals. And sometimes the men would hold business meetings or discuss politics. So it was the right meeting point. So a typical Roman bath was large and it had lots of different rooms. So you had a room that you could get changed in where visitors would take off their clothes before entering the main area. The tepidarium, this room was a warm bath. Tepid means warm. So there was a warm bath and it was often in the main central hall where the bathers met and talked. The caldarium, this was a hot steamy sweaty room and everyone um, went in there to sweat out the dirt so you'd have a very hot bath there. The frigidarium, this room was a cold bath and it cooled you off at the end of the day and if that wasn't enough they then had a palestera which was a gymnasium where bathers could exercise and they might lift weights, throw a discus or play ball games. So really the Roman baths was for everything. So here's again a model of what one of the Roman baths would look like in ancient times. So now you can have a go at writing down, go back and have a little look through, see if you can come up with five or six bullet points all about the Roman baths. Then we can move on to the markets and shopping. And this is quite incredible, but the Romans went shopping to the market, uh, which was located in the Roman Forum. Now this was a space in the middle of the town, a bit like a market square. And the market was huge. It contained many types of shops, shops that sold food, spices, shoe, wool, books, incredibly. Um, and there were barber shops, blacksmiths, and the, they had two types of forum. The Borarium, which was right next to the main market, and this was a huge meat and ma cattle market. And then they had the Cupendinis, which sold luxury good goods, so all the expensive items that people would want to buy. And sometimes it was the slaves that would operate the shop that belonged to somebody else. Now, ancient Rome also had many bakeries, and these bakeries used a, a sort of... Um, thicker type of flour than we use today and this caused Roman bread to be chewy and it didn't rise high like our bread today so more of a flat bread and finally for those people who could afford it meat was a very important part of the Roman diet. Butchers sold a wide variety of different types of meat some ones that we're used to and some ones we're not quite so used to so pork, beef, goat, wild boar, or wild pig, rabbit, geese, I've also heard um, that they would also cook parrots, which is quite strange. Now, the biggest shopping complex in Rome, um, ancient Rome was the Market of Trajan, which was built in around 110 AD. 
and this is the thing that I find incredible. It had 150 shops on five different floors and you could buy things like fish, herbs, spices, wine, jewellery, oil and much, much more. So thinking how long ago this was, it was very civilised. So now we should have our third section of notes which we're going to need to use later on this week. Okay, I've just got one extra fact that I thought some of you might like, that um, any urine or pee that was collected from the baths house, houses were used to wash clothes and for medicine. They used it to begin with just to get off all the grime off clothes before washing it with hands and soap that we would expect a bit more of today. And also when they went to the bathroom, Instead of using toilet paper, the Romans had a long stick and on the end of it was a wet sponge. And after they'd sat on the toilet and done their business, instead of using toilet paper, they would wipe themselves with this wet sponge, then clean it off and pass it to the next person. So not so nice. So, we've made our notes on entertainment, Roman baths and the market, so we can tick that one off. Now. The next job for you is to create a front cover. Now you don't need to do it this minute, you might want to do it this afternoon as part of some arts and crafts, but you'll need to put on it a heading, so mine says visit Rome, and a picture, so I've got the Colosseum here and a gladiator, I just need to add his face. So I've got my heading and my picture and I've tried to make it colourful. So I'll show you in a moment how to split your piece of paper just so that it opens and closes like a leaflet. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you can split your piece of paper. It doesn't matter if it's blank or if it's one of your lined pages from the books. Um, if you can rip it out, that would help. Okay, so we need to split it into thirds. So if you want to be clever, you can use a ruler and think, oh, it's going to be just under 10 and you can mark it if you like. Or you can have a guess. When you guess, you sort of think, right, well, if I fold that sort of to here, and then you try and line it up so that it's all fair. When you're happy, you can squash it down. So when you have your leaflet, you just need to make sure that it opens like a book this way first because if you have it that way, it's going to open wrong. So just make sure it opens like a book and then you've got your sections inside. So I look forward to seeing all the work that you send in today and then I'll see you here, same place tomorrow. See you then, bye.